the propaganda hit next stage because now they gotta justify escalating war with Ukraine. Ali Veshi is someone who's like the lead guy. We, we broke down many of his segments on Ukraine. I saw this one earlier, and this one was beyond ridiculous. So I won't break it down real quick. Why do you think he's been selected to be the person that's doing this? Or you think it's just him? Like, what? He's like the. I like I'll, they maybe have carpet, uh, carmentalized roles and like they, like everyone like they sprinkle some Ukraine talking points in there, but based on proficiency, it seems like Morning Joe, uh, Joe Scarborough, and Ali Veshi are the MSNBC Ukraine people. I don't know why. I guess because they maybe specialize in war propaganda. But whenever when they need a, 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 a insane war in Ukraine segment, it's always Ali Veshi. It's Ali Veshi or Joe Scarborough. Um, and like Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes, they will mention it in passing. It'll be probably be a part of their segment, but he's the one that he bring on propagandists to, like, he's the guy who bring on the military experts to propagandize people. So this, this segment, very interesting. I'm going to show you guys the talking points that the NATO left gets. Like, I literally don't understand, like, do the NATO left watch these segments as legitimate? Like, we watch these segments as oppo. Like, I think these are important to watch so we can, can debunk the talking points so you can Take that in your real life. When you hear people, I see all the time, I see people on Twitter that will say some shit. I'm like, I saw a segment where Ali Betcher said that. I don't know if you got it from him, but clearly you're misinformed, right? So we got to know what our enemies are saying. So well, then, there's only a five-minute segment, so it's not going to take too long. Uh, I was going to do another propaganda report here. Joining me now is the ambassador, William Taylor. He's the vice president for Russia and Europe at the U.S. Institute of Peace. He served as America's ambassador to Ukraine from 2006 to 2009. He also served. That's why these, that's why these, um, <laughs> these clips on MSNBC or on Ukraine always be so horrifying because they always be pointing up the people on like the top levels of government. And not like some random cranks they be bringing on. They bring on people who have very lar large amount of influence on these issues. And then they go on TV and they sound unhinged. I'm like, dang, these are the people that invite in our government. Anyway, let's the yeah, to, to that, to, yeah, to that point, um, and it's similar to like what was happening with China. So you notice when it comes to war propaganda, they bring out the heavyweights. They bring out yeah. uh, John Brent. I think his name is John Brennan. They bring out this gentleman here, and there's a there's a handful. There's like four or five. Uh, James, I forget his name. It was another CIA guy. James something, I forget his name. But yeah, they bring these people out as because you can't challenge them as their credentials are supposedly unchallengeable in this world of PMC. It's like, what do you mean? This guy has this, this, and this point. and this. When you understand when it's our perspective, Nick, is that if it's a CIA person, that means this person is here to tell 100 <laughs> yeah. percent lies. Yeah. That's that what that means. So that's our starting point. So if your starting point is that the CIA is, do, does good, then that's where that's where we kind of veer off. Go ahead. Nick. It's funny because uh, when I went on the Hill and I debated Robbie about Venezuela, I still remember the booty left and the people who hate, hate RBN. When that was announced that was happening, there were so many people like, oh, my God, why are they bringing Nick on? What is Nick credentials? Remember that? Yeah. They'll be like, yeah. what is Nick credentials, Bree? Why are you bringing him on, Bree? Nick got no credentials. And meanwhile, I ran circles around him on Venezuela. I ran circles on Robbie Ross Venezuela. They brought on some think tank guy on because they didn't want to bring us on at the same time. And he did a response video. So then I responded to that video and dismantled all his points. So these yeah. credentials mean nothing. And if I was on this segment, and you're going to see when I do, as we continue with this propaganda report, I can dismantle everything this guy says. But he's credentialed. You guys see how the bullshit United States uh, class system works? They view our opinions as lesser because we are not credentialed. But these assholes and Matt Dust, who are wrong about everything, are the condition conditioned foreign policy experts. You're not an expert. You just repeat U.S. talking points. But let's continue. Kiev in 2019, he served as a diplomat coordinating assistance for the Soviet, former Soviet Union from 1992 to 2002. Ambassador, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Can you pause it right there? Now, the reason they say all of these credentials, imagine a boomer listening. Imagine a liberal boomer listening to that. Or a bo in any case, anybody who's watching these shows, this is to say, listen, everybody, if you're watching this, this is an expert. Look at all of his credentials. You're not to challenge all the propaganda he's about to state. That's exactly. literally why they say all these credentials and, and to build up this meritocracy as if, oh, you know, all this education, when all this just means is he's more indoctrinated. 
That's yeah, these, exactly. these all these accolades in the military. That just means you're more indoctrinated in the system of imperialism or capitalism in this case. Uh, go ahead, Nick. Thank you all. It's great to be here again. Uh, we are now closing in on one year of this war. And when you look back, you and I have been talking since before it started. When you look back, the things that the Ukrainians have asked the West for, which the West has said, no way, after several weeks or months, become a reality. So now they've got their tanks. They have Two weeks ago, there was a remarkable commitment of weaponry uh, and ammunition from the West. Now they're asking for airplanes and, and long-range missiles. Joe Biden said nope when asked about that the other day. And so probably what uh, President Biden meant was, ask me again later, because that's been the trend, as exactly as you say, uh, Ali. Uh, Just saying the quiet part out loud here. What what have I said on RBN? They have a very particular strategy, CJ. Uh, yeah, Their strategy is not to win the war. Their strategy is to make as much money for weapon defense contractors and to drag out the war as long as possible. So what you do in those situations is you have these political theater with Zelensky like, hey, Biden, can I get some tanks? And Biden like, no, we're not going to send you tanks because that would be too escalatory. You see how we're being <laughs> rational here? And then a few weeks later, like, Biden like, buy some tanks. And there's a good reason why we th they've been doing this low escalatory process to slowly and you get the American people on board with this, CJ, because they did. And they I was just about to say that. Work. Go ahead. Yeah, CJ, go ahead. I want you to try me if you want. Go ahead. I think we get no, no, uh, no. That's the you're you 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 are stating the exact point that I was going to interject just to make sure that's interject. It's 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 millions. It's a hundred. It's ten million. Then it's go back and yeah. let's do a little more propaganda because they can't go and say, hey, we're going to actually transfer five hundred billion to them. Yes. we can't do we can't do that all at like, once. So we got to go seventy five here. Then we got to create some something that happens. Then we can send another 50. Then we got to create something else that happens. Then we can send another 25. They have to do it in these things. And the press, the media, or is intricate, intricate, is very important, I should say, is essential to yeah. this sort of dragging this along. Because if, if, if all the press has to do is push back and say, why do we keep doing this? How many times do we keep going to the well? If they ask those questions, this wouldn't be able to happen. Just think Remember of that. If we had a press that said, why are we doing this? We already have 50 billion. Why are we trying to do more? Go ahead, Nick. No, it's worse than that, CJ. That's just a good point. Because Ali Veshi, remember when he almost had his breakthrough moment? Yeah. I think it was literally the last time I covered Ali Veshi. Yeah. When Ali Veshi was like, I don't understand why we don't give everything Ukrainians want yeah. just in one package. Remember that segment? We was like, why don't we just give the Ukrainians everything they want right now so they can win the war? He was so close to having a breakthrough. They don't do that because they're trying to drag the war out, Ali. <laughs> because if, if and also because if they just announced the amount, then people are like, why are we send that much money? Now they they announced there's like another two billion going to Ukraine that I read about. It's incremental. What? It's incremental. So anyway, let, let continue because this is them saying the quiet part out loud. I'll just play the last ten again and we let it continue. Because once again, the segment is not that long. If they lot they say a lot of things I wanted to break down. When I when I covered it, well, sorry. Why why is the helper Nick, the one out front with the loudest horn saying they need money, but when we say negotiate, oh we can't do that. That'll be like that'll be like <laughs> the United States is trying to tell them what to do. But you like you're the main one trying to hey let's let's keep this fight going. Like you're yeah. the main one doing that. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah. Really, what uh, President Biden meant was ask me again later because that's been the trend as exactly as you say. Uh, Ali, um, the Ukrainians have been asking for air defense and they've gotten air defense. And the air defense that they've gotten has gotten steadily more lethal and longer range. You know, we, you remember the air defense that we saw out with these stingers that were handheld uh, by soldiers and very effective. They were very effective. No, they were the no, they wasn't. Giving them the top just, of the line. Just real quick, there was, there was like blooper videos on Twitter showing like all the Ukrainian soldiers had no idea how you stingers. And these weapons, so that's a lie. Anti-aircraft anti missiles. That's the top, that's what we use. That's what the United States military uses. So it's gone from stingers to patriots. Same thing, Ali, on the on the anti-tank. You know, we gave him the, the uh, javelins uh, that an individual soldier can fire at tanks. Uh, and now we're all the way up, as you say, to HIMARS, these, these long-range rockets, medium-range rockets. And actually, just this week, 
uh, they, the administration has agreed to send longer range, much longer range rockets to allow the Ukrainians to, to. And remember, CJ, literally like six months ago when we covered a story where Biden administration said we won't send long range weapons. That's that's a red line that would be too exploratory. Now they send long range rockets. You guys see this, <laughs> this, this strategy they're doing? They said that about tanks too. Yeah, they said that about tanks. There's so many examples that they just talk about nonchalantly, like ah no. And and and, and Ali Vesci like, why why can't we get Ukraine more? Like, ah, Biden always said the the, the the question's all about like why won't Biden do more? And he's like, ah, you know, he kind of gonna do it anyway. It was bullshit about not saying long range rockets and, and tanks. <laughs> like, that's the point. That's the point of this segment. <laughs> Let's continue deeper into into Russian held territory. So this has been the trend. Um, my bet um, is that range gets longer. Uh, my bet is sooner or later, I hope sooner, there will be aircraft added to that mix. I hope we sooner. We have not had great uh, diplomatic progress. And, and this is the concept I was playing on Jimmy Dore's show, where you have our government, which is already unhinged, CJ. Our government is already unhinged, and our media is worse than our government. Because our government... There's a ton of pro war shit, and then our media is like, "Biden, you fucking pussy. Why won't you send him some jets? <laughs> Biden, you fucking pussy. Why won't you send him some tanks? Oh my god, do you want Putin to win? Biden, why won't? Why don't we go all in? They cheering on Biden as Biden is all in for World War Three. They they critiquing him from the right. Over the last year, uh, we now have a brand new U.S. ambassador in Russia with. A year coming along and a, and a stalemate at the moment, although we are expecting a, a massive Russian offensive in Ukraine. Is there a possibility for a diplomatic approach and something that looks like an exit ramp for Russia? So, Ali, we always look for options for peace. We always look for ways to stop the war, to terminate. War termination is something that we're looking at. Uh, and one way that wars end um, is through diplomacy, as you said. But the, the rightness, the, the ability for diplomats on both sides to come to some kind of agreement depends on how right the situation is. And it's just not right yet at this point. What does that mean? According to the West, the situation would never be right. As he explains, I'll like play a little bit more and I'll continue my thought. For either side, Ali. That is, the Ukrainians don't want to stop while they're pushing the Russians out. The Ukrainians want first to push the Russians out of their country. Not gonna happen. The Russians, Putin in particular, has not figured out, has not realized, has not gotten it, that he's actually losing this battle and <laughs> have a ceasefire in place. So so that's what, uh, so Putin is in a bind, Ali. And, and it's soon, sooner or later, there will be a, a victory, I, I think, in terms of the, of the Ukrainians being able to push the Russians out of their country. And at that point, there will be the time for diplomacy. Looking- and I want you guys to realize what he's saying is insane. Because when when someone says that, they say they want thousands and thousands and thousands of thousands of Ukrainians to die before we even think about negotiating. That's what this that is the that this guy has been saying. This is what Anthony Blinken has been saying. We said we do not negotiate until we force Russia out of Ukraine, which no one anticipates happening anytime soon. So what they are doing, they they say this. Whenever Ukraine has an offensive, they say, oh, we can't negotiate now because Putin is weak. We got the Russians on the back hill. We can't negotiate now. Whenever Ukraine loses a ton of territory, they say, oh, we can't negotiate now. That would be a sign of weakness. That would be a sign of concession to Putin as he gets a ton of territory. You guys see how they always always have it both ways? Yeah, either way. Whether they're losing or they're winning, it's never ripe enough for them to negotiate, let alone the lie he just told about Putin's uh, ask and negotiate. He don't. We want the end of NATO encroachment, which you guys are not doing. You guys are arming Ukrainian Nazis and the fascist militias in Ukraine more. You guys are escalating the conflict that Russia joined to end. For options for peace, and that could be one. I don't know if you, when you and I talked last uh, February as this was ramping up, I'm not sure whether either of us would have thought we'd be talking about it a year later. What does it tell you that we're still talking about it a year later? Last question, and we move on. It tells us, Ali, that the Ukrainians are resilient, determined, motivated in ways that the Russians aren't. What does that the mean? Ukrainians. Oh. The, the, the psychopaths, 
keep saying Ukrainian people are so resilient. They're so resolved. For one, the Ukraine is divided. There are a lot of Ukrainians that want this conflict to be ended. First and foremost, they're not resolved to fight Russian, to fight Russia. Zelensky won on a peace platform. There's many people who just want the conflict to end. They don't care about the state one way or another. Me and Zoya on Nick and Night, we didn't show a poll that show that people in Western occupied territories in Ukraine, they are the ones who are most upset at the status quo, while people under Russian held territory are very happy being Russian. So what are you talking about? The Ukrainians have resiliency. That's them taking Ukrainian suffering and pain. They, and they're going back to American audiences and saying, oh, my God, American audiences, the Ukrainian people are happy to be suffering on our behalf. That's How do you know very that? very suspiciously to what some of the logic for slavery, like we enjoy slavery. Yeah. That's what the oppressor says in this case. Yeah. Too. So we only, we only got like a minute and a half left here, and then I'll, and then I'll pass to you. This will be my last segment of the day. I'll pass to you for another one, though, CJ. Absolutely. Determined, motivated in ways that the Russians aren't. The Ukrainians, like the defenders at Stalingrad, this is so interesting. You're right. The, the ironies are amazing. Um, the defenders of their own nation, of their own country, of their own city, of their own communities, they win. They're determined. They know why they're fighting. The, the Ukrainians know why they're fighting. To defend their land. The Russians, the aggressors in this case, um, don't know why they're fighting. Uh, Putin has not been able to tell his soldiers or his civilians, his people, or indeed us, why he's in, he, why he invaded. So that's the now big we know. It seems to me. We know that's a bold faced lie because we have. Why do you guys think I have done segments where Putin is straight up like, yo? Uh, they he brings the Minsk Accords. He like there had been the conflict in 2014. NATO encroached on our borders. We want to end NATO encroachment. We want Ukraine to be uh, to be a a, a a neutral country. We want the uh, the sovereignty of uh, uh, the Donbass and uh, Donetsk to be acknowledged and recognized. Like we we have shown you guys speeches where he is 100 percent clear, and this is why Putin has a 75 percent to 80 percent approval rating. Because he tells the Russian people exactly why he's doing this conflict, which they all agree with, because they're used to Nazis marching up to their border, like the Azov Battalion. And this is a long-standing tradition of the Russian people fighting Nazis because the Russians defeated the Nazis. The same way Napoleon went into Russia. This is what Putin explains all the time. And CJ, they purposely do not show people this. And then they turn around and say, Putin has no goals. Putin has no, he's not telling his people why they're going to war. As they don't show the people what the Russian position are, is, right? 